Getting split ready. Getting split ready. Getting split ready. Getting split ready. For my wife, God rest her soul. Oh God, I'm so sorry. No, no, no. She's not dead. <laughs> We're just divorced. Unscripted and honest discussions on divorce and separation. Getting split ready. What was I supposed to tell him? I divorced you from the show? Here's your hosts, Doug Katz and Mariah Pleasant. We are live on Getting Split Ready, our May show. See, I love that energy. Fantastic guests this month. I'm We've got me. Michelle Trana from Divorce <laughs> hey. Diaries. We're going to be talking about some humor and how humor can help you make it through divorce. We've got Hirsch Sherman from Lifecycle Financial LLC, correct? Correct. All right, I got that one. There were, like, I, I, I wanted to get the LLC on the end. Uh, talking a little bit about um, how you can plan strategically for divorce, which is kind of what we do at Split Ready as well, and make it a life cycle event and not a catastrophe. And then Sandra Crawford, the goddess of mediation, teaches at Northwestern, but also from Crawford Law PC. Law Crawford PC. Law Crawford PC. I knew I was going to get it backwards. <laughs> And this is your 30th year yeah. in practice. So happy anniversary. Thank you. It's wow. also my son's 11th birthday. So it's exciting. Oh, wow. wow. That's great. And, and it's going to be exciting talking about um, limited scope representation, which is an interesting, interesting um, subject in whether it's the future of divorce. And I want to wrap up the show. We're going to talk about, are we really going to see a bump in divorce? Like what everyone's talking about. So jumping right in, Michelle. Divorce sometimes brought together in the same sentence. Um, for a lot of the clients we deal with, not so much. So yeah. Talk a little bit about that. So my, I, I mean, my background is in theater and I've done comedy in a form of improv for years. And then I started doing stand up, and it was natural for me to create a show about, it was natural for me to create my divorce diary show as a comedy show because it's what I, I know and it's how I heal and grow. And I, I sometimes, and I get a lot, I get people who either get it or they're like, how do you find this funny? You know, a lot of things are lost. And I said, well, it's kind of like the pandemic right now. And I've, I've seen some artists out there. It feels like the universe is divorcing us. You know what I mean? <laughs> it feels kind of like, Ooh. and also when you go, when you going through these, these moments, like. I just had with my daughter, we were like napping at each other, mostly induced by me because I was getting frustrated. I was like, I got to find the humor in these, in the moments that are tough, because if I don't, then the opposite end of the spectrum is sadness, depression, anxiety, stress. And that, that starts to snowball into bigger problems. We got enough so, of that in the world today, right? Absolutely. So I think, I think humor is a, to be honest with you, a uh, medicine for yes. what's going on in your life, especially divorce, because right. some of that, some of the stuff that happens during divorce is so cartoon-like mm -hmm. uh, that you, I know, speaking from, from law, lawyers I've built relationships over, uh, built relationships with over the years, that they start telling me these stories and I'm like, really? People fighting over blocks of wood that was on their property. And I was like, oh wow, I, didn't, I wasn't that bad. We fought over like see, Sandra. I see you nodding. <laughs> you, you've got to have some good input on that. Well, I just all I have to say is always look on the bright side of life. I like that. Right? Very Monty <laughs> That's Python. what I sit I like out that. every day as I move my office home to first my, my dining room table, then my living room, and now I've just cleared out the TV room and I've made it into a studio. Right. <laughs> because now yeah, right. you're live on, on Facebook. But yeah, I. I get it. I, I get it. And, you know, after 30 years of practice, right? The, there, there's the bizarre, but I think there's like the folks on this end, 10% of folks are amicable, really want to work, have it all worked out. 10% are just off the rails because they've never dealt with it before or they have a history of dealing with it. And 80% of the people in the middle, you know, it's a struggle. It's a life change. It's, we're, we're not good with change. I think that's what you were saying about, you know, this pandemic. Like nobody's good with change. We like things to be the way they are. And you just have to go with it. And humor is a great way. I'd love to hear some of your stick. Well, I, I said, I said, I, I run a healing for humor program in a doctor's office in New Jersey. And I told the doctor at the very beginning of this, I said, it would be so easy to get rid of COVID-19. You just need to treat it like one of my ex-boyfriends and tell it to call me back and we'll never hear from it again. <laughs> That's great. 
That's good. Hirsch, what, what, do you, what, what, do you, what do you see? What do I see? Uh, what? No, no, I was talking, I'm sorry, uh, Hirsch, sorry. Our, our other guest. What, what do you see when you're working with clients? Do you ever have that ability to work yeah. some, some humor to help them find the, the lighter side of what they're going through? I, I do, and I love the way you put it as being cartoonish. You know, I've, I've actually this week been dealing with somebody and the spouse is trying to deal with a $1,400 problem and they're at about $11,000. So you kind of see um, what you'd see in a movie and you'd go, wow, like how ridiculous, but you see that actually happening in people's lives, which is pretty amazing as well. So this is a question for anybody out there. And I, I, I didn't cut you off, did I, Mariah? Mm -mm. Oh, when people, how do you, like, what is a strategy that you use? Like, you're, you, you came through it, Michelle, right? So it's easy to laugh in retrospect, right? Like, when right. You, you trip and fall, it, 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 you look back and you go, oh, I look like Jerry Lewis. But when you fall and hit your face, it's not fun in the moment. So how do you, when someone's going through it, help them, help them? That? And that's well, for anyone in the group. I fall every day. So, <laughs> so I also, I feel like, right. We all fall every day. And I think that my, my divorce diaries is still going. I don't think I'm ever in, I don't think you're, I think for me personally, I'm not, I'm not in the clear. I'm never in the clear because another diary moment happens just a second ago. You saw like, you know, I left my full-time teaching position to focus fully on my show. And then a world deadly virus breaks out. I was like, Oh, this is happening now. Okay. Yeah, so right, easy. right. <laughs> Just wait for the killer hornets to come through as well, well by I, the way. I, I mean, I feel like I was like, what did I do in a past life? Because I'm really trying to touch me. But you also feel like there's just a new, like, there's another, I like to say another divorce diary moment that's on your way. I'm, I'm, I'm on amicable speaking terms with my husband, my ex-husband now. Oh, I almost said husband. <laughs> right. But right. There, but there is a moment where you feel like you, I remember going through the divorce and I will never forget that heat of the moment where I thought I was going to have to file for bankruptcy. I thought my daughter was going to have special needs. We had, I had so much cloud. It sounds, that, it sounds like really funny stuff, right? It, it is. Yeah. I mean, and I also was moving back home with my parents and my 95 year old grandmother and my, my handicapped dog and my twin brother who's on a different place. It was insane. And then I thought to myself, it's still better to get divorced and stay unhappily married. <laughs> and right. I think, I, yeah. There's a quote um, from a movie, and it's an older movie, but there's uh, from Steel Magnolias, where Truvy says laughter through tears is her favorite emotion. And I think it's so true that people don't realize the healing of letting the laughter out or letting the, the tears out and letting those strong emotions kind of escape the body so they're not just held in and not just toxic. Mm -hmm. Exact. Thank. Can you come be my spokesperson for every person that uh, I book my show? Because that's the exact reason why I am such a proponent of not just with divorce, though. I think humor is a way for people to grow, to heal through. Especially right now, uh, it's very nothing is certain, and it's like, what's the new norm? And this is our lives. This is our world that we know. And I have to laugh because if I don't make my daughter laugh or myself laugh, then I'm just sinking. You feel like you almost are sinking in certain in something that's unknown. Well, and I like what you're doing with it because sometimes people need permission to laugh at divorce, right? It's not a funny subject. It's extremely painful. It's extremely difficult, but there are funny moments. And if you can't appreciate those, or if you feel bad about laughing at those or finding the happiness in the moments that you can, then you're not going to get through it. Well, and, and what's interesting is when I talk to clients and I would love anyone else to share their experience is it, it's, it's almost like talking to someone who's sick, right? Like, people don't know how to talk to going, someone going through a divorce, but it yeah. seems like they really want to open up. And sometimes they're very witty and they want to bring the humor and they want all of that to come out as well. And it's always really interesting to me that where people from the outside, when they hear like what I do and what any of you guys do, they're always like, wow, that must be depressing. And it's like, it's really not like when you're talking to people going through it, a lot of times they want to, to realize the lighter side. Oh, you get depressing? I just get asked for I just get asked for advice, right? You know, <laughs> to uh, when you say you're you're a lawyer, then they say what kind, and you say family lawyer, and then what's that? I'm a divorce lawyer. Then yeah, no, I, you, you get a lot of uh, a lot of angry stories, a lot of um, secondhand trauma. There's a lot of secondhand trauma in our profession because you can't go to a party without somebody saying, "Oh, what about my sister's divorce?" And 
you know, somebody got screwed. Am I allowed to say that? I'm, you know, um, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, um, and we're the butt of jokes too, as, as, as professionals. So that's, that's really hard to take. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely believe in, in laughing at it because sometimes you feel like you're down the rabbit hole. Like, you know, I'm, I'm at a party and now people are asking me for like advice or telling me about something I say something I say to every client is they need to be careful because emotions can actually be the most ex expensive part of their divorce. Yeah. And if you're not able to laugh a little and reduce that emotion, it will become contentious and expensive. And beyond the finances, the emotional toll that it can take on you if you don't bring that into your life, is, it's, it can be devastating for some people. And years, years later, I mean, you, you know, I, I get, you know, the conversation going with, with people in all sorts of venues and they say, you say, oh, my divorce, my divorce. And you go, when did that happen? 35 years ago? And you're like, oh my goodness. It's like they, they recall those stories like they were yesterday. But this morning, I, I always come up with good titles when I'm in the shower. I've never written a book, but I come up with great titles. And the, story, the, the, the one the story this morning is, every family is a story. Every client has a story. Right. I like so that. it's, it's, and you know, this is, this is about, you know, making sense of the world and we make sense of the world out of stories. So I thought I'd just get some like notebooks and start like writing that my, like doing my intake as if it was a story to entertain myself. Right. Because you know? everybody does have a story and generational too, like multi-generational stories. Like they'll talk about divorce and it was their, you know, parents divorce. Right. It's, it's, it's difficult. And, it's well, and I think divorce has, divorce has changed so much mm -hmm. where, the, you know, and we're going to be talking later about, about like what you, what, what you really champion a lot with limited scope representation, but I think divorce has changed to where it's, it doesn't have that stigma. And as a result, you can laugh about it because you're not, you're not living, you're not, it's not, it, it, it's way more mainstream for good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah, no, I, I, with the clients I have, there is still, especially if it's the first divorce in a family or there's religious reasons why they were divorced or you married somebody who, who was divorced and you have parent, your parents are divorced. I mean, there's a lot of it. And I still think there's a deep, because it's about the perception is it's about failure. Right. right? So there's this deep kind yeah. of, I haven't done this right. Right. And, you know, you have the pictures, the beautiful pictures of the wedding. Um, let's take some happy divorce people, please. Right? Right. You know? right. Right. I love a divorce moon and a divorce shower. I do a bit about that. Like, why am I not registered somewhere to help me pay with my retainer fee? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. There's some great pictures being taken too. Some pic uh, some women are taking some fabulous pictures of after the divorce of burning the dresses or burning the oh, I seen um, marriage certificate. There's some lingerie involved. There's some very empowering, fabulous pictures out there. I'll have to look for those, yeah. Well, this, you know, this is a fantastic subject, and we've got limited time. So the great news is, if, um, and she, I see she's dealing with stuff right now. I can see it. If One huge. They're hungry every five minutes. I hear you. No, I told you. <laughs> yes. you know, We're Italian, too, that so that's. <laughs> but I wanted to give you a chance to do a shout-out about your show. Yes. Um, and if people want to listen to it, or help support it in any way, how can they get hold of you? So my show is Divorce Diaries Show on all platforms on, I'm just gonna close the door, maybe it'll go away. <laughs> uh, Divorce Diaries on all platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, so I do the show Saturday night uh, virtually through Zoom. Uh, you came in on that that show that got, that Zoom hacked. That was crazy, the show and, that got and, hacked. Wait, can I tell you that that person, whoever it was, they followed me to the next show. They, I got a sponsor oh. and they, and so I had to call Zoom. I had to file a huge complaint. So I came up with a, a virtual bodyguard. I was, I was like, no one's gonna bring my divorce diaries down. So follow me at Divorce Diary Show. I have uh, my show on a very virtual platform through Zoom, and you have to register for the link. You can find it um, on my website, divorcediaryshow.com. Click to events. You can go there. Or just find follow me on any of the platforms. I'm also, the, the podcast is on Anchor, Divorce Diary Show. If you want to hear some of the scripted series, I do some unscripted stuff where there's interviews and, and male and female awesome. panels. But it's all comedy. So, yeah. you know, if you think you're bad, if you think uh, some of your choices in the post-divorce, especially dating, I make some pretty uh, interesting. I remember questions. your show, yes. <laughs> the, the Greek was back. The Greek was back on Saturday. Back. He, he, he actually called in to the show. 
Oh, so. there you go. Well, it's remember, I thought that that was him. I thought the hacker was him because he was a guy with an accent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, he has a big hairy chest. He doesn't like shaving because uh, it's to show that he's committed to it. You know, I, I get it. <laughs> now, is there, a, is there a Patreon link or anything if people want to support the show? I did have a Patreon link. That's that that I've stopped doing. But okay. it's the way you can support the show is going on the YouTube to subscribe. You can go to my website. There is like a donation, but I really just want people to follow, tune in, okay, subscribe, great. and tune in. Write a good review if you like it. And uh, awesome. Go live again. Come grab a ticket in your city. Well, and don't hang up. I'm afraid <laughs> you're going to hang up. But I want your I oh. want your view definitely as we're talking through the other. Oh stuff. yeah, actually, I'm saying. This show is brought to you by Keystone Mediation. If you're looking for mediation help, we do virtual mediation, uh, any type of mediation. And we've actually rolled out real estate mediation services uh, as well, which I'm a part of. So I'd like to plug that. Um, now, moving on, Hirsch, talking yeah. a little bit about um, a strategy. And I think, I, I kind of think this actually plays together because I think part of the reason people can't find humor is it's a catastrophic event in their mind, as opposed to being able to not glide through it, but move through it elegantly. So talk a little bit. We had a great conversation when we brought you on the platform. I did want to do a shout out. You're one of our great split ready divorce uh, financial pros. You can find your, his information on our website as well as what he's going to talk about uh, after when, when we tell you how to get hold of him. But talk a little bit about your, your, your philosophy because I love it. Yeah, you know, and it's so true what you were saying about the the uh, photographs and you get all this creativity and then you find when people are going through their divorces, they just have no creativity in how to come to a solution. That's kind of interesting. They, they save it up till the end or something. I'm not quite sure what that's all about. Um, so you asked about the, the approach, I guess, or, or my philosophy. I take everyone and I start with the simple phrase of prioritize, organize, simplify. Uh, when you're working through this, you have to understand what your priorities are. If you don't, you're never going to get there, right? It's, it's just not going to happen. And very often, they don't even know what their priorities are because from a financial perspective, especially, they might never have dealt with them. You know, a lot of the people I deal with right now, they call it the gray divorce of 50 and over. The last time they paid a bill, for example, they had to lick a stamp, you know, write out an envelope and walk into the post office. Um, and I, I'm dealing with people in their 50s, their 60s. I've even got one who turned 71 about three months ago. And so they are sometimes like a deer in the headlights when it comes to this kind of a thing because they, you know, they're in the middle of this, in a military phrase, they're behind enemy lines and they, they just don't know what to do. So really, if you want to have the best outlook and the best outcome, you want to start before. You don't want to start when this is happening, before everything is happening. If you have the opportunity, you're not always the one that files. But if you are, you want to understand, how do I put my team together? And, you know, a team sounds very expensive, but sometimes it actually saves you a lot of money. Because, no offense, you, your divorce attorney has an expertise. I'm not putting them down. It's important to have the right people but they're not always a financial expert and they're not always the therapist or emotional expert and they're not the real estate and the mortgage expert. And sometimes it sounds almost counterintuitive. You put people together on a team and you let them be one team for you and your outcomes can be significantly improved by doing something like that. The other one, obviously, I think everybody kind of knows this intuitively, but doesn't always do it. Put a support team together emotionally, friends, whether it's a support group, whether it's a, ch you know, a church group, whatever it is. But my, my rule with that when I told Phil, it's got to be positive people. I think we need, um, we need more comedic support groups. Yes, thank you. That would be huge. Everybody could write but this might be something new. Yeah. And I have, I have on my watch party one of the doctors who works for the North Jersey Health and Wellness where she's saying the same thing. She referred so many of her patients to the Healing for Humor program that not even we're going through divorce that it's because it helps people identify problem areas where like I, I rant, I'm Italian. I use my, we use our words and our bodies. We go off and I say, well, this is the best avenue for me to go into mom. If the arts to filter this. And, and so with comedy, it's accepted because you're kind of reflecting back on, you know, I know I shouldn't text my ex-husband five different text messages about why I think, you know, 
certain things are appropriate right. for the, his weekend. But it's, it's cool. so what's necessary, what's not? So I can filter the humor part of it and let myself feel better and not go off on him for, for silly reasons. Well, and I want to move this over. Sandra, I saw you nodding. Yeah, a lot of reasons. As Hirsch mentioned, team yeah. and support. And, and I think sometimes, you know, you were talking earlier about legal, the legal profession in family law being the butt of jokes. Yeah. The target of ridicule or, mm -hmm. or hate sometimes, right? Like everyone's, oh. the stuff where there, there's, there's, you know, I was amazed as I got into the divorce industry deeper, how different it was and how the attorneys were then are painted in the media and stuff. We did a show about that a while back, but talk a little bit about that because everything I've seen from attorneys like you is to help people build a team. Mm -hmm. Well, I do a very specific type of, of family law. Um, now after 30 years, I can tell you I litigated for the better part of 25 of that. Um, and then I've mediated since 94, and now I do collaborative practice, which is a team, an interdisciplinary team, non-court model. That's what it is. It's limited scope representation because the attorneys commit not to go to litigation. Their contracts are not litigation contracts, so we limit our scope to being problem solvers, to being team builders, right? A, a divorce at, at the fundamental level, is, it, there's three types of divorce. We can put everything in nice little box. There's the emotional, there's the financial, and there's the legal. I'm, you know, I can tell you, big secret, the legal is probably the easiest because we have rules to follow. This is where you file, this is how you respond, the, the, you know, the civil discourse are, are, we've got that down. It's the emotional and financial. So when I take intake clients, that's what I say. The, the legal is not the problem. It's how the emotions and the finances are playing out over here that then exacerbates the system. The legal system is, you know, all you hear about is underfunding and, you know, um, problems with the system and delays in court. And people don't know that they can really take back power and hire attorneys who can help them build that team. And it doesn't have to be in the context of a full collaborative case. Collaborative is a very, very stylized form of a limited scope representation. It's not for everybody, but neither is mitigation. In the early years, I've been doing collaborative now since it came here to Illinois in 2002. It was founded by basically a worn out litigator, Stu Webb in Minnesota. Look, up, look him up on YouTube too. His, he's a wonderful video as to why he came to doing this kind of work and why he realized that attorneys really did have to narrow their focus to be focused on settlement as opposed to what I call, you know, having, you know, one foot on each place. You can't really settle if what you have to do is keep thinking about, well, how is this going to play out at trial? Or what am I going to disclose that I want to keep for trial? So just the system. And there's wonderful books. There's um, one of our colleagues internationally has um, this uh, um, metaphor that she used. It was like riding two horses. If you were trying to settle a case while litigating a case, right? Um, Nancy Cameron from Canada. So, I mean, there, there's so much here, Doug, that, you know, I don't want to, yeah. No, well, you're, you're, you're the last segment. So again, we don't want to give away all the goods right now. I, I mean, I wanted to hear, wait, look, I'm right. It looked like you had a question. I do. I think this also kind of goes back to the whole comedy discussion and giving divorce permission to be the life altering, sometimes catastrophic events that it is. Mm -hmm. um, and not hiding it under the rug or not, you know, just going along with what your lawyer says because you want to keep your head down. You don't want people to know that you failed, which it isn't. Um, but it's not that different than when someone's diagnosed with a serious illness. You are going to go and do what you need to do to take care of yourself, but people don't necessarily do that in divorce. You're not going to have your surgeon also be your primary care doctor, also be your exactly. you know, radiation person. They all have their own specialties. And if it's a serious illness, you're going to get multiple doctors. And the same thing for a divorce. If it's a serious event in your life that impacts you so much emotionally, financially, legally, to get that team makes sense, but we have to talk about it. We have to laugh about it. We have to make it okay to seek out those professionals. Mm -hmm. now, Hirsch, I want to ask you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. From, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it came about from, from you know, a, a group of burned out litigators and a group of burned out mental health professionals who were saying the system is just ruining families. I mean, I say to clients, you will be divorced spouses, but you will never be divorced parents. You can't divorce the children, so you have to right. come together in that relationship. 
um, in a different way. It is not, you are not dealing with, you know, the adult person I fell in love with and now I'm not in love with anymore and all the things that go with that. You're dealing with that person as a person who was influencing your child. And if you don't support them, nobody else will, right? right. And if you right. don't and have like this. Sandra, sorry, Sandra, I, I agree. Cause I say to people that the divorce is not the last chapter in this part of your life. It's the first chapter in the rest of your life. Right. And you yeah. need to, you can use that. It's, it's cool. I don't think I made that up. You, um, no, you have to get that in your bio. I don't think but, you have that in your bio. We got to get that on the site. I'll, I'll put that in. But I, I, I believe that so much because people can destroy their relationship trying to get that extra $2 out of their spouse. And then they're never going to be able to co-parent going forward. Mm -hmm. And, you know, think, they, they need to think about that. They need to be a little bit more creative. I, I, I got to tell you, I, I just got to put this out because since we started with this support group through Divorce Diaries. I'm thinking, I, I'm envisioning you having this support group and everybody's there and you welcome them and thank you for coming. Okay, we're going to start up. Everyone's going to go around the table and tell one funny thing that's happened to them in their divorce. Like, I'm imagining starting your divorce support group that way. I well, mean, I've done that. Very have, you been to, have you been to one of my shows? I've, I've actually done I, that for- I, I haven't seen all of, <laughs> I haven't seen too many of my shows, but I love that. You know what, she's and, been and I'm Chicago. Envisioning she that. performed- I like performed Zanies. at Zanies. Yeah. And, and you know what's funny yeah. is that I, I've said that to people, like what's, I, when I have some do, you know, interviews with the podcast, I said, well, what's the funniest thing about divor your divorce specifically? And it's really not even uh, me and my ex-husband. It's like, the, I mean, we get into it sometimes, but like my lawyer looked at me as the first mediation I had, I, not mediate, it was I had to go and sit with another woman who was going to possibly a mediator, I think it was. And I'm horrible sometimes with the terms. I just remember him prepping me. He's like, Michelle, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> oh, it was, it was probably an evaluator. It was not evaluator. an yeah. evaluator. Yeah. Please, Sandra already knows that she could yeah, tell yeah. them about, I would say something in defense of my mother. Like, and, and so I kept my mouth. I followed the directions of the teacher. Like my mother always taught me. And I listened to what he said and I left. And at the time, my ex was so emotional, even though I'm an emotion, more emotional being than everyone I ever met, like he was emotional. And I walked out feeling like, I did it, I did it. And like, that was the funny <laughs> moment that I was proud of myself for not acting like a crazy Italian from North Jersey to get my point across. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think people are so unaware of when they go in, you know, one example would be that people always think, okay, we're going to split things 50-50, it should be, you know, and when I tell them it doesn't have to be that way, it, it's so interesting. They're like, look at you and I go, well, how many houses do you have? One. All right, are you taking the left or the right? You're splitting <laughs> it right down the middle? Like, you know, it, it just doesn't work that way. So, you know, a part of it is that education for them, which maybe helps them in the emotion side, but, you know, taking a bit of that, that time to educate them on the path that they need, I think is very important as well. So do you, Hirsch, do you tend to work with both divorcing spouses or kind of what's your model of working with the client? I, I've done both. Um, I am a trained mediator, but I don't mediate in the true sense. I, I've sat second chair a few times and been neutral, you know, a, a financial neutral to help them. Um, I've got a couple of clients right now who are divorcing. It's relatively amicable and I'm, I'm working as a neutral, even though it's, it's not collaborative. And I'm actually working with one couple right now. It's very interesting. It's, they both divorced and, and they've met each other and want to move forward but I have no idea how to combine and or meld, I guess, you know, blend into a new couple, which is also an interesting, um, I guess, market if you want to look at it from that perspective. Most of my clients, realistically though, are women getting divorced. The man tends to do the finances, whether they're 30 or 60, I'm still finding the same thing. I always say to them though, he wasn't born with a calculator, he had to learn it. And just because he did it, certainly doesn't mean he's doing it well. Um, I believe if they work with me, I can teach them how to do it significantly better than their spouse ever did it. Well, another great subject. Now, Hirsch, if somebody, besides going to our Split Ready Divorce Pro Network, if they want to get hold of you and, and right. want to learn more about going through this in a, in a, in a strategic manner, uh, what's a good way they can get hold of you? So my company is called Life Cycle Financial. The easiest way is go to my website. It is lifecycle.financial. 
is no.com.net. It's lifecycle.financial. It's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Read some of my blogs. Tell me what you think. I'd love to hear from you. And we will have, for all the guests, all the panelists, we will have all their information in the posted replay of the podcast. So if anyone listening or listening to the replay wants the information, it'll be there. So, um, and Getting Split Ready is brought to you by Split Ready and the Split Ready Divorce Pro Network. If you're looking for credentialed and vetted pros to help you through a divorce, pros like Hirsch, pros like Sandra, go to the Split Ready Divorce Pro Network. You get a um, subscription free to Split Ready when you take the Split Ready assessment. And that's the first step to getting Split Ready. So Sandra, you and I have talked at length about, well, first, congratulations on 30 years of practice in law. And, and, um, I'm happy to toast a virtual toast Chicago. tonight. <laughs> yes, yes. But, but in the collaborative space and in mediation, you know, I, I joke a little bit, but you really are a legend. Like everybody knows you. You're, you know, an instructor at the, you know, Northwestern uh, mediation program that I know so many people that have gone through, and that's where they learned. It's this. going online. It's going virtual. Oh, because yeah, you and I were talking about it. Is it? Teaching, yeah. We were supposed Fantastic. to be teaching last week, and now that's an interesting thing. It is. And, well, yeah. and that's, are you going to be teaching it online as well? August, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, well, and that's, <laughs> you know, just the now. ability to take the, your 30 years of practice and teach that to more people is fantastic. But I know that limited scope representation takes on a lot of different, different forms. Um, yeah. Anything from collaborative to people kind of doing it themselves. Like I, I compare it to semi-homemade cooking, right? You know, you buy a kit and you add some stuff and it's like homemade. But do you think that that's becoming more the future of divorce? I think it is. And I will tell you um, on June 10th, I'm doing a, um, a uh, webinar for, for the Illinois State Bar Association on limited scope. And the, this, the cover of our bar journal this, this um, month was about limited scope because folks are in, in hard economic times, there just isn't the dollars there, right? Yeah. And lawyers now having to migrate to virtual with courts being closed, you know, people needing access to justice that they can't get. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the wave of the future. And I think, and that's funny because I've been doing collaborative for, for 18 years now, and that's all it is, is limited scope representation. So now it is, the law is very slow to change. Now it's the, it's the topic du jour around the, um, at least in Illinois, in the legal community. So it's time has come. Um, we've been ready in the collaborative community. We've been preaching interdisciplinary practice. And I will tell you, in the last 18 years, practicing interdisciplinary and studying interdisciplinary with financial people and mental health people has really improved my skill set, right? right? It allowed me to go on to teach uh, um, mediation because you've got a different perspective. It's not the law. I mean, I'm here to tell you. If you want the law, here's what it is. In Illinois, we, under professional code of responsibility, it says, so long as it is reasonable under the circumstances and the client gives informed consent, you can deliver services in kind of bite-sized chunks, right? So yep. I can ghostwrite something for you. I can go in and argue one motion for you. I've actually had a client who was very successfully did her own um, Custody case in Illinois, when we still call it custody, now we call it parenting allocation, which is really a sea change in the language. Um, but, you know, I had a client who very successfully with coaching, with help ghost writing, because she couldn't afford, she was, she had a self-catering, she was a caterer, had a catering business, um, and just had a child who was 16, 17, was, she wanted to save her money to put that child through college and not spend it on, on litigation. And, it, you know, it's, it's not for everybody. So it's like everything. It's not for everybody. You have to, as a client, you have to decide for yourself. But I practiced, I started practicing, Doug, before the internet, before cell phones, right? I mean, right. there's a long time, right. right, where the information wasn't available. To Do you think that's been a driver for limited yes. scope? Is that, yeah. the, the, now, but the question would be, and, and this is where, our client base, Mariah and I talk, it all, talk about it all the time is, there's a lot of information out there, doesn't mean it's good information. And a lot of people think that right. limited scope representation is, that, that prose is better. I'll do it myself, all the answers are out there. I'll write my own divorce decree, instead of getting a little bit of help. And, and Hirsch and, and, and Michelle, if you guys want to chime in, um, it sounds like that's not the way to go. Yeah. 
it, it's it's risky because you you think to yourself, I have the ability to learn the law in the next I don't know six weeks, where somebody's been you know to law school, been practicing in in this case for thirty years, has an enormous amount of legal expertise, and you thinking, oh, I can get up to speed in six weeks, it's fine. I'm not saying there's not things you can do by yourself. There certainly are things that you can, but there, I I firmly believe you should have some input from an attorney, whether it's reviewing that final document, whether it's guiding you on the basics of the law and how things come together. Uh, I, I'd be very, very uh, nervous if a client said to me, I, I'm going to handle all of this by myself. Don't worry. I, I would worry. I definitely would. I would never, ever want to handle them. <laughs> I, I personally, I mean, I, I don't, I have a thing for people who are not in who act, I have an agree, a grievance with people who, ha, who act as though they're experts because they read off of Google or Twitter as opposed to being an actual expert in the field. It, it really frustrates me. Um, and I, I'm going off of, you know, currently what's going on. Everyone has an opinion, understandable. But everyone also acts like an expert. Uh, and in, with, with divorce, for me, it was, now I'm going to have an attorney. Why would I not have an attorney? But, but not, but what my, the other thing was not just an attorney, an attorney that is going to be on your side. And, and I don't say that because most attorneys you think, oh, they're on your side. I had your family, wasn't a family friend. It was a fa friend of the family who was my first lawyer. And that was a mistake uh, because they really weren't, they really didn't want to take my case. And it was evident. And then I switched. So I, I had to really should have evaluated the kind of, uh, as opposed to just pulling the trigger with a lawyer, uh, because I was so afraid of money at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like I really should have also, besides you know, not at all representing myself, but finding the attorney that was gonna really get me what I wanted, which was simple for me. And he came to an agreement with me too on it, my ex-husband, it wasn't, it wasn't even a matter of uh, fighting over it anymore. But, uh, you know, at the beginning, I needed someone in my corner, so. Mm -hmm. Well, limited scope representation, see, it allows clients who cannot afford to have full representation. And here's the thing about representation, at least the statistics in Illinois, upwards of 70% in some counties are self-represented litigants. Yep. And what people don't recognize is what strain that puts on the system. The court systems are funded through tax. So, you know, when you say, oh, okay, I'm going to go to the court system, it's free, and I don't have to have a lawyer, and I can walk into a courtroom, and it's free. It's not free. The rest of us, everybody who pays taxes in that county are paying for that system. So it's not a, well, I'm going to represent myself, and it'll be free, because people who don't know, then there has to be special, you know, services and help desks, and that all costs money. And yep. yes, I want people to represent themselves. So I have no vested interest in saying, you have to have a lawyer and you have to pick me because each family, I, the wheel I do for my clients is the people, the problem, the process. And that's always, and the people include the attorneys and not, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I have a very specific philosophy about how family law should be practiced. But the funny thing about me is I went through divorce in the middle of law school with three year old wow. twins. Yeah. So you want some funny stories? We'll, we'll talk after, but I'll have no, to that. Question, no. No, I don't love that, but I think that there's some, yeah, see, there's always a, there's uh, always no, a story. story. No, I got to ask you. There's got to be a lot did of that, material with that one. Did yeah. that drive oh, you to yeah. family law? But, but we're very good friends and we're now helping our daughter plan her wedding, an international oh. wedding that just got canceled and postponed. Oh. And yeah, so we're still very good friends. So now, did, but, did, did going through a divorce during law school push you to family law? No, no, absolutely not. Because the first uh, three years I practiced, I did mechanic lien foreclosure where I represented contractors and subcontractors. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, because I worked full time when I was in law school too. So I, I worked for a patent and trademark firm. They were the good days. Yeah, I actually took a, oh, can we do some therapy? Actually took a pay cut to go, to go practice law the first year I was out. <laughs> yeah. So it's not all, all that's cracked up to be. And I think lawyers... We are a very small part of the population. I think people don't realize what a, what a small, like in Illinois on any good day, there's like 70,000 lawyers who are practicing, active practicing lawyers. And there's 13 million people in Illinois. So we are a really small part of the population right. that's vested with, with all that like 
the you know when people are at, at you know at odds with one another and then they resolve it then it turns against the lawyers so you know and, and we really are i mean as i said the bar association has really come around i mean initially it was it was not an easy thing to sell collaborative which was limited scope but the bar association you know had written rules and done this investigation on the lack of access to justice because people arrive at the courthouse and didn't even know where to file and the clerks aren't allowed to tell them or give them any legal advice so the whole system especially before the internet people can find some information now if they're semi-proficient yeah. at google yeah. before that it was a crapshoot yeah. well and i so, i want to i want to move a, a question for hirsch is let's say someone comes to you without representation yet or they're starting going that direction and you're talking budget how do you help them figure out the right kind of divorce? Because they might think they want a certain kind of divorce and they really don't have the resources. And I have those conversations. Very true. Tell me a little bit about how yeah. that, that meshes with your process. So I, I think there's a few things with that. One is, and, and it was said very well earlier, you really have to be comfortable with the professional you're working with. I, I, I think I'm very, very good at what I do, but I'm not right for everybody. I mean, if I'm not the right person and, and where I tend not to be the right person is if I'm working with them, I want to set a realistic budget. So I do budgets differently. I start with them and I'll say to them, I don't care about your income right now. You know, most people are like, what's my income? How much do I spend? Let me hope I have something at the bottom. And, you know, I, I say ignore your income. Start with what you absolutely need to live off of. Now let's look at your income and see how they match and, and have a discussion then about moving forward. Everything is now a spending habit and a choice. And are they healthy or are they not so healthy, right. these choices and these spending habits? That's a big thing. But on the other end, I'll tell you this, 70% of people in this country or households in this country do not have a budget. Mm -hmm. And I wonder on the other 30%, how many actually live by their budget or, you know, they've got two kids since then kind of thing. And, you know, oh, yeah, I got a budget. Let me go find it somewhere. You know, um, <laughs> I, I think I think the guidance and, and just being raw, honest, and I don't mean that in, in a rude way. I just mean I, if, if this is not going to work, it's not going to work. I need to tell you this is this budget's not realistic. I, I've also had on the flip side of that where people want to learn and be responsible and they've been pressurized because the spouse is saying, just give me a number and we'll be done. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And they really do need to do that work. And if you can do that ahead of time, like I was saying earlier, I think that is huge because then when it comes to these discussions, they can make rational decisions. I also think, though, they need to be realistic. You know, divorce is not free. And sometimes saving a little bit by not using, for example, an attorney can cost you a lot more on the other end. Mm -hmm. And so I try to bring that into the picture to answer your question in a long winded way. I do ask them, go speak to attorneys at a minimum and interview them. And I've, I've actually got a blog that tells you how to interview an attorney. But one of the things I want them to say is, if I don't use an attorney, what are the downfalls? Mm -hmm. Learn, uh, you know, and you can still make that decision. I, it's up to you. But I'm not sure I would agree with that decision on the, on the bottom line. Well, and, you well know, Hirsch, I think it's an old model that people think they cannot buy, uh, you know, an hour's worth of service, right? That, if, oh, if I'm Correct. a lawyer, this is, this is all going to be too much without even knowing it. And like I say to folks, you had a budget for the wedding, even if it was just for the <laughs> ring and the flowers and the the license, what's your budget for this divorce, right? What's the budget? Right. If you're going to fight about money, you need big box money where there's people handing you $100 bills every second. Because yeah. unless you have that going on, you can't fight about the money because it's yours. It's not going to grow the pie. I that think, is awesome. I love that point. Yeah, I, I think that. the media ha ha has done a bad service in, to the divorce industry. The kind of the, just what's out there, um, it's just, it's, it's this unreal, you know, it's the, the sad music plays and the, and the divorce papers arrive in the mail and it's signed the papers. Right. Well, yeah. there's a, Jay Cutler is getting divorced and all I'm saying is I had him on my vision board for four years. So it's good news for me. I already <laughs> told you about that. You're talking to Chicago people. I know. Cutler's on no one's vision board. Oh, <laughs> I, I just said no one's him. vision board. <laughs> No one's vision board in Chicago. No, no, Doug, no. I'd like to leave it on a, uh, on no. a serious note. Sorry. Unless it's in a rear sorry, view. Sorry, Sandra. Bring, sorry. It, bring it back down to being more serious. 
but like get out there if every like two people tell two people you know the, the old shampoo commercial or is nobody old enough for that one understand that you can employ attorneys to do discrete tasks such as drafting pleadings writing letters on your behalf coaching you and for particular issues in a case we now have a whole bunch of rules in illinois and the rest of the country if it's not already there is going to follow suit because it's something all the law societies are, are, are working on. You can buy time. And most attorneys, I will tell you, most attorneys will give you an hour free. I do, because I want right. to get to know the client and if I'm, it's not a good fit, I can't be in that space. If somebody comes to me and says, I want to rip the heart out, I want to take the kids, I want everything, you're not the person I want to work with, right? Sorry, right. that you may, there may be people who will do that for you, but I've I've been to the heart of darkness. I've done those 10 day trials where, you know, you had the client who wanted everything and the expectations were if they didn't get the purple couch. That's a, a line from my mentor, right? They're fighting about the purple couch. It's like, you know, if they didn't yeah. get that, then they didn't. But working with mental health professionals and working with a lot of the stuff out of the Harvard negotiation product on interest-based negotiations, which is the basis of mediation. Now I'm going to teach you a little bit about that the basis of mediation, anything out of the Harvard Negotiation Project, and I recommend people read the book, Getting to Yes. It's about getting away from positions and getting into why is it you need to put the couch? Why is that so important to you? And like the whole idea of, oh, we attorneys don't deal with emotions. <laughs> Sorry, you know, yeah. you don't check it at the door. No, it's not like baggage. You can check it and come in. So there's a lot, but I would say just getting out the word that attorneys aren't the bad guys. We will normally give, most of the attorneys I know, and I'm a sole practitioner, give free advice, but it's worth just that, right? Free advice is not worth much. Um, but you kind of like, nobody knows they can approach attorneys, and attorneys are generally, I believe, shout out for my profession, kind-hearted. We are trying to do the best. Most lawyers, you know, come out of law school with this, you know, we've got an idealistic, sense of things until, you know, we meet this public opinion and public image of, well, you're all after the money or you're taking our money or you're part of the problem. And I think in the, at least the limited scope representation space, the attorneys there are, we want to be part of the solution. And if we can't be part of the solution, then we're, we're not for you. Does that make sense? And I, I, I want to say if, cause we've got to wind this segment down, but if people want to get hold of you, you know, you've got so much great information out there. Um, how can they get hold of you? What's the best way for them to get hold of you? Very simple. Lawcrawford.com. Just L-A-W-C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D.com. This COVID has made me start a blog. Right oh, after 15 years. You've had some great articles. I, I, we shared one of those articles a, a couple you. weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, you have to, it's like a, it's like a, a, an animal, like probably children. Now you have to feed it. You have yep. created yep. it. And now I have to, to feed it. So there's all sorts of distress. So I, I'd love any input from, from all of your guests for something to put on my blog because it's Well, and they can also find you in the split ready, uh, divorce pro network. Um, you've got, you know, your collaboration pro mediation pro legal pro and in the advanced search with what you're talking about, limited scope representation, we actually call that out. So people can find those perfect type of attorneys that can help them for the, the little bit of work that they do. And the other term, the other term for people to remember, unbundled services. So limited scope or unbundling. So it's this idea that we have kind of the things that we do as attorneys, writing, giving advice, you know, having opinions, telling you about the law, telling you how to act in court, um, preparing you to, to go into an evaluation and not feel like <laughs> not come out on the bad side of an evaluation, right? Is yeah. that they, all of those are discrete tasks that lawyers will do because all we have in land of Lincoln, Abe, Abe Lincoln, all you, have to, all you have to sell is your time and your years of expertise. And most, by the time most lawyers get out of uh, law school, they've done, you know, seven years of, of studying and a year of studying for the bar you know, so there's eight years behind what we do. And now, kind of, you know, eight years and a lot of dollars. I'm, you know, 30 years ago, it was expensive, but not as expensive as it is now. But, you know, attorneys are there. And, and we're, we are, interestingly enough, and I don't want to belabor, make a long story longer, as my father used to say. Um, we are, under our code of ethics, we are public citizens. We're not private citizens. So in our, our preamble to, to our code, and it's based on the model code, we are public citizens, so we have to serve the public, 
right? And you cannot just get out of a litigation if you want. You have to get leave of court to come in and go out. So our kind of the profession's standards are very high. And I think that's something that I'm very proud of in the collaborative movement in the State Bar Association. Um, I'm very lucky to be the third vice president of the State Bar Foundation. And we do a lot of education for the public on access to justice. Because if people don't know what their rights are, they're not going to be served well by the court because the judge can't tell them when they get there. The judge can't give them advice. The clerk can't give them advice. So get a, get a little bit of advice will go a long way. Right. That's that makes sense. Do. So, no, and it's great. And we have like the perfect panel. You know, I, we, were, we were figuring out what the last subject was going to be. And all you read about right now is, boy, when COVID ends, the courts are going to be full because everybody's going to get divorced. And, and, you know, I know what I think and whether it's contrary or not, but I would love to hear from all you guys on what do you think? Is, it, is there this pent up demand? Are people going to end up, you know, are there as many people going to reconcile as, as who didn't and find that they actually liked the person that they didn't think they liked when there were no distractions? Like open forum. I want to, I want to hear what you all have to say. What? I think it's wow. threefold, right? So we've got forced proximity that probably didn't exist before. Um, even if one person worked from home or whatnot, there was the ability to get away from each other. Um, and even the healthiest of relationships, I think that's sometimes important. Um, I think people are coming to terms a bit with their own mortality, right? So we're all probably checking in a little bit more with our health. We're wearing masks or taking these measures so that we don't get sick. Um, and then I think you alluded to this a little bit earlier, Michelle, the, the polarization of what everyone's thinking and saying about what's going on can exist within a household as well. So there's a lot of different factors going against this that weren't there. What is it only two months ago? Has it only been two months? Yeah. So March, so April. Believe it or not. (laughs) What month is it? (laughs) I know, right? September, June. Um, Yeah. Sounds good. I think it's like when people, um, when you're, you're, you said that perfectly, Mariah. Mortality, right? So besides that, you know, I have thank, knock on wood, have and healthy and have a healthy daughter. But you start to really think about what your life goal, what is your, you know, I'm a big alchemist, uh, I read The Alchemist, I'm a big, you know, what's a personal re- legend, and I lost my father five months ago, and he had severe COPD, so thankfully, he happened to kind of, I don't want to lose my father, but if he would have been living in this mess, it would have been horrible, um, we probably wouldn't have been able to see him, he could have yep. caught it, and, and, and so, you think about what do you really want from this life? Your relationships is what people leave this earth with, right? So you think about if it's divorce, if it's staying together, if it's going to make you stronger, if it's going to have you grow apart. I feel like people are going to start realizing that they have to take action in this new norm. If, if they are really serious, because, you know, life, life is, goes by quickly. So I think that taking more action from people might happen. So you think you're you're in the more divorce more divorce column? I don't, I think it's going to be either it's going to make people stronger or they're going to to get out of it quickly because they don't know how much time is left. Not to put it like in this morbid way, but I yeah. do believe that. I think that people's the mortality is on people's heads. Like what what you know? Or unfortunately, it could still just be the same where people are staying in a relationship because how am I going to date now when I have to go out and wear a face mask? But well, you know, I was actually going to ask Hirsch, like financial portfolios, right? And, and it talks on what you were talking about too, Sandra, uh, in terms of like what people, if they were going to get divorced, what they thought was the pot of money that they would fight or not right. fight over. The one that they have the new start, like you were talking about, Hirsch, might now be 70% of what it was. And now, do they have enough to get a new start? Will that make them stay together? Assuming that they're both fully that, that, employed, that is, too. Yeah, that, and, and that's huge. I mean, in any situation, uh, you should know who you are financially. Whether you're getting divorced or not getting divorced, you should know. Um, but to your question, I, I saw a meme that I think plays in so well. It said, at the end of this, there are going to be four kinds of people. There's going to be a monk, a hunk, a chunk, and a skunk. And what I got out of that when I looked at the pictures that came with it is 
everybody I think started off with going, oh, I've got extra time on my hands. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to learn a new language. I'm going to focus on grow myself. And, you know, two weeks later and two months later, where are they? Are they bitter and like, I can't believe this is happening? Or are they still working on themselves, moving themselves forward? Hopefully, when you're stuck with somebody, you kind of have that realization, look, we stuck together, let's work on this. Like, you know, we all had that energy in the beginning and hopefully that's where it's going to go. But I don't know that everyone is as well equipped or equipped enough in order to really work it out. I, I think often divorce is not because you mismatched, it's because you miscommunicate. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you've never worked on communicating and working on that and understanding things together, I'm, I'm not sure the time together is going to make that big a difference. It may just exacerbate. I got to say, I love all your quotes, man. That was a great one. <laughs> I'm Sarah, trying to figure out which one I'm going to be. Exactly. <laughs> what, what, Sandra, what do you think? Where, where do you think it's going? So for me, I mean, I had to do some thinking about this and I'm working on a project now, right now to, to write a book for about blending families. I mean, the reality is, you know, if there's not enough money, people move home. I think Michelle, you said I did too. move home with your children and your, you know, I brought twins to my parents' house. There's going to be a lot of blending of families. There's going to be a lot of people who were in the middle of divorce and going, are going to have to rethink it and suck it up because they can't get their kids graduated or into to college. Um, the court system is, it wasn't equipped before. It's not going, you know, they're, besides they're not going to let more than five people in an elevator at the time to go up to the courthouse. You know, it's not, it's not equipped. I mean, we're very lucky here in Cook County that our, we had a presiding judge who had a disaster plan and we were up and running and doing virtual um, proof of hearings right. um, in, in within two weeks. So, I mean, it's the people, the process, the problem. It is a cycle. Everybody, again, every family is a story. Every client has a story. And I think you just, whether it goes up or down, it doesn't really matter. It's where are you at? What decisions are you making? Are you making the best financial decisions, emotional decisions, legal decisions for yourself as the consumer, right? And where do you put your toe in the water in all of that? Um, but I don't, I mean, how high can the divorce rate go? I think the other end is people are not getting married because they can't. Their weddings are getting postponed. That's what, you know, disaster I'm, I'm dealing with here right now. An international wedding was supposed to take care place in Greece in August has now been postponed till next year. So that's more kind of, you know, the blending of the families now. Everybody has to be involved in that because, you know, there's safety issues. You know, I, my, my Fiona, when she came home from New York, she was living in New York and had to come back to work remotely here. And she said, when she came, she said, it's good that all our, our old people are dead because we don't have to run to the nursing home. I mean, that's like, you know, pretty morbid, but wow. yeah. we didn't have to run to the nursing homes. And they just recently, like, I, and I sympathize with you, Michelle, because same thing, we lost my mom yeah. a couple years ago. So it's, I'm so sorry. you know, it's like, yeah. yeah. Wow. But I, I don't think it matters. I, I don't you think it'll stay so pretty flat. Ask you, Doug, let me ask you a question. Why does it matter how many? No, I think you're right. I just, I thought it was fascinating that you're seeing all these memes, right? The other meme I see is, you know, like some dude looking like this and it's like, divorce attorneys waiting for COVID-19 to end. And, and I looked at him like- Please be kind to us. That's yeah. just not kind. That's no, well, not but, kind. but it, it brought to my mind, like, does it really matter? Because what kind of what you're saying is that, you know, you might find, I, I think before, like when we were talking in the virtual green room uh, about this and like when I said, my relationship with my kids, as an example, from COVID-19, you know, with all the stuff they missed out on and all the disappointments is markedly better, right? And I've gotten to know more about them, anything from, you know, their study habits, because I'm school, I'm homeschooling, you know, to some degree, to just everything and, and getting to know them and sitting down and having a conversation because there's nowhere else to go and having that five, five o'clock, you know, my, my, my daughter has gotten like really into cooking. She's gotten really into fitness and cooking. You know, Hirsch, what you were saying is like people doing different things. That's been her yeah. way of dealing with this, but she cooks for the family and we sit down like five o'clock and eat. She hasn't yet figured out portions yet. Well, small portions. I need a little more than that, but we sit down and we interact and it's great. And you know, is that going to happen to people where they're like, it was Rocky in the beginning. And then maybe they find a show to bond over on Netflix mm -hmm. or 
Amazon or whatever they're watching and they're like, oh, this is a great show. And they re realize what their commonalities were and, and don't get divorced. Or mm -hmm. do they realize that they despise the other show, the show that the other person watches? And do they say, God, you know, this isn't really working. Like, I think it'll be interesting to see whether it's a catalyst for one or the other. Yeah. To touch I'll, a little on though, I, what you said, I'll, Doug. I'll tell you what I think, sorry, why, why I think it does or, or why they should be aware of it at a minimum. I, I tell clients, the person who ultimately is responsible for the outcome of the divorce is you, the client. And you need to be the biggest advocate. I'm not saying that you're, the professional you're working with isn't concerned about you, but you need to be that advocate. And if whatever it is, there's 10% more cases, you've got to make yourself almost 10% more visible to your professional that you're working with. Because as much as they want to get to you, if they've got 10 or 15 or 20 other people they're working with, mm -hmm. they limit it in what they can do. And, and so, so it'll be, you it'll need be who, to be able it'll to be who can pay them. probably too. Mm -hmm. Potentially also. Now, Mariah, I want to add- that they can was... buy services on, on, on an hourly basis, right? right? Okay. That, you right. Could, that you know you can have that access so that you can understand in, in greater detail than you can get from reading. I mean, you know, I've got seven years of education in this, folks. You know, go ahead, try and read it and make sense of the, the, yeah. the statute. Right. Sometimes we can't make sense of the statute, and that's what, why cases go up on appeal. Well, right? I look so at it, it's like, it's like if you're doing a project on your house, like I'm not allowed to, my, my wife's dad was a, a master electrician. Like I'm not allowed to do like major electricals. I could do other stuff, but the, the, the risk of me, you know, completely blowing my brain out, like shocking myself is just not allowable. So it's just like, you got to figure out what you can do and what you can't do. But Mariah, I know you had something right. to say, so I want to, I want to end, end with you. I was just going to end on a funny, um, there was a article I read and it touches a little bit on what you said, Doug, and a little bit on what you said, Hirsch, that, um, over 50% of men currently think that they're handling most of the homeschooling in their home. And about 4% of women agree agree with that so it talks to the new challenges of COVID and the miscommunications in relationships <laughs> right right well, some of that i think is because the kids like like my kids don't like me to teach i'm because sure I, I there's bring, valid reasons I bring, it is, I bring that military <laughs> side of it right and you know so there's 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 the nurture and the and the discipline we got to balance that out yes but i want to thank I think all I, i'll give you a funny tip to, to, oh, go ahead to, no absolutely uh, michelle we're stealing your your kind of like your show her I, I, I'm, I'm putting together this presentation and it's about communication and listening. And it's an Archie Bunker quote. And he said, the problem is, is what was his, his wife's name was Edith. The problem is Edith, I speak in English and you listen in dingbat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's the, you know, we're, we all have to get better at listening to one another, right? I mean, I think yeah. once you listen um, really with, you know, with, you know, Listen with heart. They, I have I actually, I brought my computer home from the office and I actually have a sign on it that says, think with your heart. Mm -hmm. um, and I show this to clients because at the end of the day, divorce is still very destructive. I think there's still a lot of shame and guilt and all those bad emotions attached to it. And, you know, but it's your decision to make for your life. And, you know, the lawyers are here, there's lawyers here to support you, not just to grin and say, we're going to make big bucks off this, because after 30 years, I'm here to say, there's, there's very few big bucks to be made. Right. No, I hear you. You know, it's, when I talk to a lot of divorce attorneys, the other thing they say is, you know, it's like, I, I remember I once did a loan for, for, a, for a guy who owned a funeral home, and I said, it's got to be the best business because everyone dies. He said, but you can't refuse to serve someone and that you don't always get paid. So great conversation. I got to say, this has been one of the favorite shows I've done in a while. I really, really appreciate all of our panelists. And I want to thank Michelle Trainer from Divorce Diary Show and Healing yes. Through Humor. Yes, thank um, you so much for having me. Absolutely. All your information will be on the show or on the, uh, when we post everything. Uh, Hirsch Sermon from Lifecycle Life Financial LLC. And uh, last but not least, Sandra Crawford from Law Crawford Priest PC. I had to get that out. Thank and you. also, again, ending with a happy 30th anniversary of practicing Thank law. You, you know, Thank we've you. been ending the show a little bit differently lately. And I, and I really want to end, you know, as we've got listeners out there, and people will be listening later. All of you guys, as we talk about this, it reinforces what when Mariah and I started building Split Ready. It's not pro-divorce. 
it's it's pro new start, Hirsch, just like you're talking about. And I want to yeah. really encourage anyone listening or listening to an archive version of the show. If you know somebody who's facing this, you should be seeing how fi- fantastic the people in this industry are and how dedicated they are actually to a fantastic outcome. So, you know, help, let them get the help, send them to split ready, send them to Hirsch, send them to Sandra, send them to, you know, we created a new business for you, Michelle, with, with, uh, <laughs> with comedy support groups. Hey, um, come on send, now. Them, send them to Michelle <laughs> and, and let, help them get the, the, the help that they need to, to not burn through assets and to have a great outcome. I encourage right. everybody to, Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Find us on podcast networks. We're on every podcast network. Subscribe there. Um, check out our blog. Uh, you know, you, we've got a ton of information to help people out. So if you know somebody who's getting a divorce or you're considering it yourself, do the right thing and get educated. And Mariah, we, we screwed this up last time, but do you want to take us out? I thought you were doing it. Um, do it. No, I can do it. It's the, the sanity thing. Oh, that one. <laughs> um, if you or someone you know is going through a divorce, go on our website, look at uh, all of the stuff that we offer because we do strongly believe that you can get through your divorce with your integrity, your finances, and hopefully some sanity. And I almost said insanity, some insanity yeah. intact. <laughs> well, no, it's great. I, I didn't mean to spring that on you, but I feel mm-hmm. like I've been doing all the talking. And again, thanks everybody for listening, you know, um, and look for us uh, next month middle of the month. Uh, it's usually the second Tuesday. I think we push it back to the third this month. And uh, if you have any questions, go to www.splitready.com. Ton of information there and a ton of great professionals as well. Thanks very much and have a good one. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.